months. I was there in uh, Perth, Australia on the 20th, I believe I showed up and I was there for the last two weeks of training and Islam looked great. Um, Habib would call me up and Habib would say, coach, I'm really worried about this fight. Uh, Volkanovski is really, really tough. Uh, I'm concerned for Islam on this one a little bit. And I'm like, mm, I'm not. We're going to win this fight. I don't know how easy, how hard, but we're going to win this fight. So I know you're worried, Habib, but I'm not worried. And, and he goes, I know, I know, coach, but 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 I think we, you know, we, you know, this is a tough fight. We need to prepare for a tough fight. I go, well, yeah, that's true, you know, but I still feel we're going to win, you know. Mm. And, uh, of course, fast forward to the fight, right? You know, it, it was uh, it was everything Habib said it was going to be. Super, super tough fight. And uh, for me, Alex won that fifth round, the last minute, minute and a half of, the, of that last fifth round. And to me, I only gave him that round. Just that but, one, right? But yeah. it was devastating. Mm. It was devastating. So in people's eyes... You know, that was, oh, you know, he, he did so fantastic. He won the fight. And then you look back, well, no, he won more fights because the other rounds, the other rounds were closer. Mm. But but Islam won. Uh, to me, Islam won four to one. And if you say three to two, okay, three to two. Coach Javier Mendez back in the house again for part two. I was saying that you only came back to Dubai because you missed me. You felt like there was something missing from your life, right? Since the last time we spoke. Yeah, my jabber was missing from my right? Jimmy. Well, you my know, Jimmy, my jabber. The, it was Jimmy Jammer. The, Whatever, jab I jab the Jimmy and the Jammer. <laughs> the Jimmy with the Jammer. Right? Jimmy, Jimmy with the Jammer yeah, was, was missing, so I had to come back for the Jammer. You had to come back, man. It's yeah. always good to have a jab in the, in the Arsenal, in the right? In Jimmy, yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it works. Yeah. Um, look, you, this time around, you've been... Uh, You've been going around, right? Seeing the Maldives uh, chilling out and having a, a good time there in the clear water, <laughs> the fishing, everything. <laughs> yeah, I almost drowned snorkeling because <laughs> they told me bite down on 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 the the snorkel. the snorkel. Yeah, so they bite down. So I bite down on it. My teeth are uneven, so I, every time I go under, I'd have to go back up because I'm swallowing seawater. <laughs> <The> seawater. <laughs> Until finally, they said the key word. Just put your lips around it. it. Softly. Yeah, 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 softly. So I did that. Then it was easy. But before, I was so tired by that time. Yeah, you were like, I'm uh, done Yeah, I was like, man, I'm done with this. But it was an incredible, an incredible uh, view of fishes that are right there. I saw a big ass shark right by me. And uh, it was amazing. It was literally amazing. I've never seen that right right off the, whole, right off the room. Yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. within, I kid you not, uh, maybe 150 feet from my room i was snorkeling i'm i'm right looking at the fish right there no it was way. yeah yeah it was unbelievable so you could have just done fishing from your room and just put a rod yes. out the balcony yeah and yeah just... or spear fishing right off, wow. off the room yeah not off the room per se but it was like about 150 feet from my yeah. room See, that it was, was incredible and yeah. you enjoyed the maldives somewhere you'd go back again was that the first time i was my first time in maldives my uh my brother's uh docking coup in in uh infaz tried to get me to go for like two years i wouldn't go and yeah. this time around because it's ramadan and the majority of my fighters are Muslim. So mm. I got the freedom. Some time off, yeah. Them, yeah, I got some time off. So, you know, I love Dubai. And uh, it's like, I feel like Abu Dhabi, Dubai is like my second home. And, uh, you know, I wanted to come here and, and mm. finish up some business because uh, I did another business with uh, my partners, uh, Doc Inku and, 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 and Infos. We opened up another business, uh, you know, called JII. Okay. Sign for Javier, Infaz, and Inku. <laughs> uh, fight related? Uh, no, not fight related at all. Money making related. Ah, okay. Why isn't it J I I J, bro? Wish you could bring me in there. Well, I could have brought you in, man. Yeah, well, I was man. like, hey, I'm 34% partner on this thing, so I don't know if I'm I would have to, taken 4%. You were taking 4%? Okay. Yeah. When no I problem. know that anything that you're a part of is going to go sky high, so 4% will turn out to be a lot. Dude, the last time we were here, <clears throat> This is why I was saying to you before we got so much to talk about. Last time we were here, Bilal was preparing for his fight and Islam was preparing for his fight against Charles. Yes. Which was happening, I, I believe, a couple of days after we filmed the episode, right? Yeah, after we filmed the episode, it happened uh, the following week. Yeah, the following week. The following so we, week, we yeah. haven't, I mean, we've spoken a bit on WhatsApp and stuff like that, but yeah. we haven't spoken about that whole thing. Yeah, so there's some things you don't know that, that I will tell you now. I'll, well, the first thing I'll tell you that was a big, uh, a fiasco that happened is uh, uh, we filmed your show and about four days later when when 
uh, you know, the week the week of of the fight, yeah. I got COVID. No, <laughs> seven of us got COVID. No, yeah, <laughs> we were we were stuck in the room. I didn't we didn't say nothing to anybody, and wow. I didn't get cleared till that Saturday. When, when the fight I went was, the fight was you, you yeah, say so that I, was, I did. I didn't get cleared, but you were like, they didn't say just go downstairs. And yeah, like, stay up yeah. for as long as possible. No, right? I was. I they didn't even know the UFC. Wow. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. We kept it a hush hush. So I was in. I was in the uh, at the Maidan Hotel all this whole time, wow. and people were asking where was coach, where was coach. <laughs> Nobody knew I was, and everyone uh, was there, right? Yeah, the everybody hotel. was there. Well, except the other coach too. I'd say Fula wasn't there either. The other mm. coach, but the other the other ones were there. But the two main coaches, you know, weren't there. You know, and because uh, we had we had we had uh, we we got COVID. Well, you didn't get it from here because I was all right that week. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it somewhere, but it's like uh, wow. yeah, there was seven mm. seven of us got it. I suppose it's hard um, when it comes to COVID and and wrestling, right? Because it's like so many people are sweating and close and. And you just don't know where it's coming from. Like it's, it could be from anywhere, right? Yeah, it's impossible to tell where it's coming from. And, and uh, at that particular time when people were catching COVID, it isn't so much the athletes that were catching COVID. It's the the okay. friends of a friend, yeah, right? Yeah. And if you got an elderly, you know, father or mother, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's or someone that's you know got diabetes yeah, yeah. really high. That's the danger that was involved. Not the athletes themselves. Mm. You know, they're normally all fine. So, they don't even hardly feel it. Yeah. So how did you prepare for in that last week? How did the Islam prepare as well without you guys. It's, last week is no big deal. I'm not really needed. The training's yeah, not as much. Yeah, the training's yet. done. I'm not really needed. Uh, and the biggest thing that Islam does that he would need help on, and I'm no expert on whatsoever, is weight cutting. Yeah, yeah. that's the hardest uh, thing to do. But uh, you know, he, Islam has a great dietitian mm -hmm. from the UFC uh, that take that takes care of him. You know, I so. mean, it's it's easy to do. It's hard to do safely. Anyone can wake up and just get that weight down. But doing it in a way that's not going to just like really hurt you in the long run, that's the that's where the techniques come in and where the UFC coaches. Well, what I found is, you know, when I watch what these guys go through, making that weight's not an easy task. It is the most difficult thing I've ever seen these athletes go through. Mm. And I'm so glad I never go to these weight cuts. It's depressing, <clears throat> man, watching these guys suffer like that. It yeah. is crazy. But you're always making fun of them as well as it's coming up because I always see you put in the videos with the big dishes and everything. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, you, you can't have none of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You and DC, the same thing, man. Yeah. It's like you get this thing where it's just like, I'm going to make you suffer yeah. while I'm eating. And yeah, but I forget that. what it's all about when I see and when I go to the weight cuts, then I realize, oh, man, what a, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. I am because I'm like, uh, that was not cool. <laughs> yeah, but you know, they, like, they suffer. They know it's just camaraderie when it yeah, comes down. Yeah, exactly. They know I'm playing, but. So that fight, talk to me. Because obviously your reaction said it all. And I mean, how, how are you feeling in that fight? Because you had, there was a, a clip that went viral pretty much from our last podcast where you were saying Islam Makachev is the most complete fighter <clears throat> in UFC history. And the, not history, welterweight. We're, yeah, I'm that, not, sorry, I, 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 lightweight. Lightweight, lightweight, yeah, lightweight, that, lightweight, yeah, history, lightweight. Yeah, lightweight. Um, and people were like, <clears throat> no, I mean, you should have seen the comments. No, and this, and this, and he's going to, and Charles is going to do this, and Charles is going to do that. And, you know, I had this overwhelming feeling that I knew Islam was going to do what he did. Yeah. In hindsight, it's easy to say that now after the, after the of fact. Course, but of course. I kind of knew that that was going to happen. And I just, I stayed back. I didn't say anything. I didn't reply to them. I said, let's wait and see if you're right. Yeah. And people thought that Charles was going to dominate Islam. And what a performance it was. <laughs> I got so much hate because I made those comments. Right? Oh my God, you effing Mexican. You yeah. love that. Go back to Mexico. Yeah. Da, 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 this and that. Or go back to Dagestan. Yeah. You can show up. <laughs> I got so place, much right? hate. Yeah. Oh man, I was from every country that they hated. Yeah. Yeah. I got so much hate because I made those comments. And then what I said on a few of these guys, I said, okay, tell me which fighter is more well-rounded than him in the history. And champions. I said mm. champions. Tell me what fighters more are uh, well-rounded than him and tell me where. Hmm. Not one response. No response. Because yeah. they couldn't. But then you get someone who'll go, Conor McGregor, and you'll be like, all right. No, you can't answer that with Conor yeah. because Conor doesn't have the ground game. Yeah, but Conor fans don't see past his name. Like, it's a weird thing. Like, he has a... He has this kind of tribe that he can do no wrong where these people, yeah, they, yeah, they just won't, yeah. they just won't. Even yeah. if he loses, they'll be like, it was because one of the, the ring corners was not straight. Do you know what I mean? They'll always make an excuse. Um, but again, what a performance that was, the way it was. I mean, you couldn't have asked for anything more to submit the submission king. 
well, in you the know, way that he did it. Well, it started with the punching. Yeah, where, yeah. where they 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 where Charles's group thought could never happen. Yeah. They thought because they were just going to dominate. Strike apparently. That's what people were yeah, saying. Yeah, that's what they were saying. And I said he can strike. We have to. He can do it all. You know, he can do it all, and and uh, he's proven that. Uh, but you know, as time goes on, when you're the champion, there's the bar. Mm. And everybody knows where the bar is at. So all, everybody you fight from that point on knows where the bar is at. So you have to elevate your bar. Otherwise, they're going to catch you. They're going to work on things that are going to be able to, mm. you know, checkmate you more or less. So in other words, Lism always has to keep getting better because if he doesn't, the next fight's going to be tougher than the following mm. fight and it may not go his way. So he's always got to elevate his training. Especially because you're champion. Because when you're champion, that's when people are studying videos. That's where people are like, okay, <clears throat> every time he strikes here, he puts his head down yeah. here. Like before that, people aren't really no. watching that or they're like, just don't let him take you down yeah. or don't let you whatever. But now there's like so much more. There's video on you. They're studying you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I remember the very first time uh, I started saying these comments uh, was with Frank Shamrock mm -hmm. when he won the title. And I said, I said, congratulations. Now the work's really begun. Yeah. You know, and now you now you're really going to have to train to keep that title. And he just looks at me like, huh, I just won the title. Now you're telling me the work's really, really begun. Mm. And then he fully understood it after, obviously, because he defended it really well. Yeah. You know, so he was one of the greatest, you know, middleweights of all time. So he was the first one I told that to. Now you got to defend it. And now it's harder. Yeah. Did you think it was going to happen in the fashion that it happened in? I uh, never mm. predicted that. I always predict five round wars because I don't like going anything uh, closer. I mean, sorry, I don't like to predict in anything sooner than that, because if I say second round, you know, stoppage, and then it goes past the second round, then my mind is going to think, oh, second round. Oh, we're not, you know, I don't yeah. want to lose track. So if I think five round war, <laughs> then I'm in it involved from the first second till the last second of the fifth round. Yeah. And even uh, Khabib, Khabib's reaction to that, you could tell that it was just like, it meant a lot to him, right? Of course, it meant a lot for him because that was uh, that was his father's favorite student. Yep. You know, outside of Habib, happened. that yep. was his father's favorite student. And for that to happen and Habib to be in the corner was was a great moment. One of the probably the greatest moments for him as a coach. Mm. And moving on from there, when the news came out that Habib was not going to coach anymore. How, how much of that did you know about before it happened? Or was it the same as the retirement where you were like, ah, okay, I guess. <laughs> no, the, unlike that one, I knew before everybody, I believe. I think he told me first. He, he called me about a month out and he said, coach, I'm going to step down from coaching. I want to devote time to my family. And uh, I just need you to know before I'm going to bring the guys in, in January and I'm going to get the whole team and I'm going to let them know. But I wanted you to know first. And he told me and I said, okay, great. I, he never said for sure how long he just said he wants to devote time to the family and uh he was giving up ego fc the prof the fighting promotion uh so he's no longer involved in that either oh really i yeah. didn't even know that yeah, yeah. the promotion is still going on not but not with him it's his name hmm. like rizvan the man yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know he's handling ego fc still but not with habib not with habib present you know it, okay. it's with his endorsement 100 percent, but his involvement no he he just wants to devote time to his family but he told me this time he told me a month mm. out, so I knew before everybody. And uh, so it wasn't a shock when he yeah, said yeah. it because he already told me. How does that, <clears throat> okay, let's break it down into two parts. How does that that uh, announcement go with all the guys together um, when he first makes that announcement? How, how is it taken? How do people react to it? And also at the same time, how does Islam react to it knowing that he's got the Volk fight coming up that Habib was not going to coach him in? Well, you know... For Islam, I think, it, you know, I didn't talk to Islam because I wasn't there when they had that talk, but I would think for Islam, it probably was a little harder because he was used to him being there all the time. And this is going to be Islam's first time that if he wasn't fighting on the same card with Islam, he was there cornering Islam. So for Islam, this was this was probably deep down more of a shock mm. than anything because he still had me, you know, and I was been with him all this time. And, and he had his other great coaches, Magomed and Saifula. Saifula wasn't with us because he was he was stuck in Russia. Uh, but he had everybody but Habib. But the one thing that he always had and will always have is Habib's always talking to these guys uh, daily. And mm. Habib was on the phone talking to him before he walked out. So, so he's been there like his father was with him. 
Because his father was never never cornered uh, uh, Habib with me except for one fight, yeah. uh, the one with Dustin. And uh, before that, Habib would be on this phone with his father daily. And then before Habib would come out, he'd be on the phone with his father. So it's kind of like the same thing, you know, the, the, they did the yeah, same kind of... Just role reversal. Yeah, role reversal, you know. And uh, so having Habib there in person, yeah. Do I want that? Yeah, absolutely. Because mm. he was on track to being one of the greatest coaches of all time, in my opinion. And... And uh, now he's still a great coach, but I can't call him on track because yeah. he's off the track. Yeah. Is it something you think he'll come back to? Or um, I mean, was it more of a I want to be with family thing? Or was it more of a mix, a bit a mix of the religious part of it where it's kind of like I don't want to be involved in? From, from what I know, from what I know, and I don't know everything, uh, it's family. Mm. Um, that's all I can think. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't dive into it. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's the real reason? I just he goes, OK. And I, the only thing I asked him. As I said, that's great, but you don't have to uh, be training the guys. Just show up on the corner days because your your yeah. presence is huge. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. It's a big plus for me, too, to have him there. I go, so he goes, ah, oh, you know, coach, I don't know. I don't know. I think about it. I think about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, obviously, he hasn't been in the corner with yeah, me. So, it. you know, so obviously, he's keeping his word. And, and in all fairness, too, a lot of the times, he hasn't been in the corner with me, with the mm -hmm. guys. He, isn't, he wasn't in the training with Usman when he won the Bellator title. It was all training with me, and I was the one in his corner. When he defended, Usman defended the, the Bellator title, you know, again, Habib wasn't there, and he wasn't there training them. I was there. So, mm -hmm. so Usman's used to just being me and his other guys there so so you know and habib behind the scenes like calling them on the phone so mm -hmm. habib's always there but he just wasn't there his presence wasn't there mm -hmm. so he's used to it do you see usman <clears throat> becoming a next ufc champ well he's in bellator yeah, so but who I, knows but who i think knows? i'm sure we, we think that he, or we know that eventually he's gonna well, end up there let's, right? let's put it this way usman got voted out of uh, the top 100 uh under 25 uh you know, uh, under 25 years of age, best fighters in the world. He was number one. Hmm. He got voted number one out of all 100. So, and he's the only one that was the champion. The hmm. only one under 25 that was a wow. champion. It's it's out there. You can look it up. And uh, I've said it before when I trained them that he's got the most skill out of everybody I've ever trained in my whole entire life. And what has he done? He's gone and proved it. Mm. He's done everything. All his fights have showcased great jiu-jitsu, yep, great, great wrestling ability, great striking, great, great, great footwork, yeah, yeah. great mental. Yeah. yeah. And you know, um, I got to thank the biggest person I got to thank for, for putting that puzzle together, Habib. Mm. Cause it, when it was just me with Usman, Man, I had problems. I had problems with him. I said, right. Habib, yeah. I said, Habib, I need you. I need you. Please what, what help me. What were kind of the problems that you were facing? It's just his mental focus wasn't there. You know, I'd say something to him and he wasn't snapping to it. He yeah. was just like, la, la, la. And he wasn't really attentive the way I, I, I needed him to yeah. be. And it wasn't until Habib started working on him with me that, that I, I said, okay, we got it, and then I knew we were gonna win. I knew we were gonna win it, and you know he's he's entered in the the, the million dollar tournament in Bellator, and he just won his first fight against Benson Henderson, yeah. and he was the only one that actually submitted Benson, you know, uh, and 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 even even uh, Damon Maya, who who mm -hmm. went with Benson in three rounds, couldn't submit him, and here Usman submitted him, you know. But I mean, do you not think that <clears throat> the UFC is going to be the way forward for him, considering that there's not. Like after this uh, this tournament now, there's not much else he can do. And is the reason, here's another question, is the reason he's not coming to the UFC because of Islam? Of course, of course, of course, of course. If he if, if Islam wasn't there, you know, Usman would want to be there, you know. But yeah. but in all fairness, Bellator's taking care of him really, really well. Mm. And what what is what does it really matter at the end of the day if, if, if you have a promotion that's really taking care of you, that's moving up, and and they're putting their money behind you. And I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. Bellator's putting their money behind him and they're looking to build him. So to me, it doesn't matter. What he wants <clears throat> is to be famous yeah. and, and, and be a champion, which he is, and a promotion be behind him, which they are. And as long as Islam is there, there's no need. And also, too, you got to remember one thing. He's got a signed contract with Bellator. Yeah. It's not that easy to just jump over. But I mean, it's not that easy. And and what you were talking about, let's talk about it. So <clears throat> PFL doing very well at getting, I mean, they're, they're growing a lot. Bellator, they're, they're, they're starting to pay more, all of these things. But the one thing that they don't have is just the marketing of the UFC. Like 
which is why I think UFC get away with paying people less because they can make you a lot more famous a lot quicker than any other pr a promotion that's out there, right? Hands down, hands down. So hands down. yes, once he does that, once he gets the million, if Islam moves up, does he then come to to the UFC? I don't know. Um, is it that's something you've spoken about or anything no, like that? No, no, we have never spoken about that because you know Islam is still is only thirty two years old, you mm. know, and uh, Usman's only twenty five. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 24, just turned 25, somewhere in there. And so he's still got a lot of time lot for of time. growth. Yeah. So by the time Islam's done, is you know, Usman's only going to be still under 20, 27, 28. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> plenty of time, right? You know, yeah, so, it's, so it's, it's a crazy so, one, right? So when you know that it's just yeah, there. There's plenty, yeah. plenty of time. It, yeah. He's only getting better. And, yeah. and uh, wait till his brother Umar uh, wins the bantamweight title for the UFC because he will win it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. will win it. Mark my words. I'm saying it here. Yeah. Usmar will win the bantamweight UFC title. He will do it. Within it, it, how long? I would think two fights. Uh, he hopefully he gives us. They give us a top five guy next, and then yeah. you know, you know, worst case maybe we fight the number one contender and then we fight for the title. But but I, I said it before that I thought that we would get one more fight this year, and uh, then hopefully we can get a title fight. But Things didn't happen exactly yeah. like that. It was close, though. I almost hit it in the nail, almost. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, some of the top people, um, you know, Umar's number 11 ranked, okay? And some of these other guys that are much lower ranked, why would they fight Umar? He's too dangerous. Mm. If I'm managing Umar... Yeah, you I, don't want to lose I your rank. I don't want to lose my ranking. 11th, yeah. No, especially when he's that good. Yeah. To me, Umar's number one. To me. To me, and and maybe he's eleven in people's eyes, but remember, Islam Makhachev was number eleven yeah, too. Yeah. And in my eyes, I said to yeah. me, he's the number one. Yeah. Where is he now? It's another prediction that's going to come. Yeah, this I'm telling you, this, Umar mm -hmm. is going to be the champ. I haven't predicted wrong yet on, on on my guys. Nope, nope. And I'm saying Umar's next. I'm going to keep that clip for when keep he that clip. The <laughs> when keep he that the clip. The, the it is going to happen. Yeah, it's yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay, so Bilal, amazing fight that that night as well. Bilal was unbelievable unbelievable, right? unbelievable and i'll tell you what all credit goes to one person again habib yeah habib looked at balao habib says to me coach i want to help him i want to help him he needs my work and i said okay yeah go ahead he's a great guy habib spent extra time with him went rolling with him hung out with him did a lot of special things with him and one day balao's just the first time he rolled, rolled with Habib, he's just like shaking his head like this. And I'm looking at him. I go, I go, hey, <laughs> don't feel bad. Because there isn't anybody that has an experience what you did yeah, when yeah. they go to go with him. He goes, man, it's just I've never experienced that. Right? I go, yeah, well, no one has. Yeah. You know, everybody thinks when they, they can see, but they think that when they're in there with them, it's going to be a different story. It's always but easier it's when you're looking. It's the same path yeah. when they yeah. go with Habib. They all go... What just happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's the same with, with, it's not even training. It's just the same with other fighters. They all have a game plan until he crosses your legs and puts you up against the cage. Yeah. And then it's all over, right? It's easy to look on the outside, yeah, yeah. but when you're in there with a guy like him, dude, it's a different, he's yeah. just a different guy. I mean, yeah, he's not yeah. the, he's, he's like nobody I've ever seen. Yeah. Like nobody I've ever seen. I'm, look, I've seen guys that have more abilities uh, talent wise, but, the mental, the chin, the 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 this the the strength and just the the grappling yeah. uh, uh, expertise that he has, I've never ever seen that. <laughs> Still to this day, I haven't seen that from any MMA fighter. Mm -hmm. As an MMA fighter, I'm not talking about the jiu-jitsu fighter. I'm not talking about wrestler. I'm talking MMA. Mm. I've never seen anybody like him. Yeah, well, Khabib is kind of like a he's kind of like a Swiss a Swiss watch, right? Like the insides, the mechanics are like like a Rolex. You don't have to. You know, keep winding a Rolex. As long as it's moving, it's going to keep going and keep going keep and going keep going and keep going. And keep going. Yeah. So it's like he's not. It's like he's not thinking, but thinking. You know, super fast at the same time to the point that it's just going to happen, and it's going to keep happening until he stops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. no one else yeah, is yeah. going to stop it. It's just the movements are just there, and they're going to move the way they're supposed to move to give you the time. Yeah. And that's all you're going to get. And you can't keep up with. Him. Yeah, yeah. You just can't keep. He's yeah. just. He's just too technical. You know, he's too strong. He's. He's. He's the whole package. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, when it comes to the grappling, like you mm. know, grappling exchange and the stand up. Of course, I can't say that. Yeah, that's yeah. Ridiculous because he couldn't kick very well. Yeah, he yeah. started learning to kick at the end there, but he couldn't qu kick very well. But he started learning in yeah. boxing. He started getting the boxing down really well and uh, i would actually 
see him beat the guys just in boxing only. He would just want to stand with them, and mm -hmm. he'd beat the strikers. He'd beat strikers or good strikers just mm -hmm. with boxing. And I know people are going, no, that's not Habib. Well, yeah, that was Habib at the end. Mm -hmm. That was definitely him at the end. At the end, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if he had not retired, who knows what would happen. Yeah. But he just kept getting better and better. But even when I was talking to Bilal and he was telling me, he was like, the problem wasn't just Habib. It was Habib on his off-season weight weighed like four people like do you know what i mean like he was so heavy and so strong when he was ready to fight but when he didn't have to cut and he had that extra bit of like yeah, uh, weight on yeah, him yeah, it was yeah. even more impossible yeah, to get up there yeah, more yeah. but what a performance it was and bilal it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy bilal is such such a genuine guy um and i feel like the ufc is doing him dirty man well bilal just needs to roar you know, he just needs to go out there and roar. And he started, but he did start it late. Mm. You got to roar out there, you know, and it, you got to understand it's, I understand what you're saying, but if you understand the business model, then you go, well, you know, just go out and make some goddamn noise there. Yeah, but I mean, what? You know? how much, he's the biggest troll on, on Twitter that there is, right? And on he, Instagram. But he, how much more noise can you make, especially? But there was guys ahead of him already. Yeah, already but, okay. Trolling. But when you look at stats, right, of who should be next in line for that title fight. Yeah. And then you've got Colby, who's, who turned up to the to the Leon uh, to the Rocky and uh, uh, Usman fight, and, and now they're saying he's going to fight next. Now, it, in every shape or form, it should be Bilal. In every shape or form, it should be Bilal. But the UFC chose Kobe, and Kobe was the one there making the weight to be as the backup. And that right there is, in their eyes, the person they're going to give yeah, it but to. Are you is trying to tell me that person? Bilal would not have gone and made weight if they gave him the option? I don't know because I don't I don't know what what those guys do i just know yeah. that they call the shots and it's not who is right to get mm. it because the person that rightfully deserves it is Bilal. Mm. i know it you know it everybody that's a hardcore knows it but everybody loves to hate mm. Col kobe you know they do yeah. they, they want it they, i i the, the guy's a perfect heel yeah yeah he is you know, right? he's a perfect heel and, and now that they signed with wwe it, it, yeah, he's like I'm the perfect sorry, he's one a perfect heel yeah. and and you know what it's all it's all a, it's all an act yeah it's all an act he's just chael sonnen 2.0 bad yeah, right yeah. chael sonnen was 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 all an act but he was like you could tell it was all an act with kobe yeah. it's like he sells it better yeah you go is he really a jerk like that is it that really him but it's not really him i know it's an act mm -hmm. i don't i've never met him but it's not an it's yeah, not he's doing real. what he needs to do he to needs, get where he yeah, wants to be, right? He knows this is sport entertainment, you know? And and look what he was doing, what he's out promoting Trump, Trump number one, this and mm. that. I mean, he was loyal to the core on, on what he what he wanted to do and and he was doing things that got people. Yeah, you but know, it got I mean, the attention. That's the problem and, and, and that's why I think <clears throat> boxing lost a lot of fans. Because they just weren't giving the fights that the people wanted to see, right? in boxing and then a lot yeah. of people were just like well why is this fight going on we want to see the champions fight each other we want to see the number one against the number two and that just wasn't happening and i'm just wondering how long can they get away with this kind of thing well the ufc has been doing the number one versus two like the islam number one number why, two why stop now you know but Bilal, he was number four if i'm not mistaken right yeah. okay so he's not number one so unless they put him on number one I mean, you and I want Bilal, yeah. but, you know. It's a tricky it, one, especially when you know someone and yeah, you know what you they're love going the guy. through. And you, you love the you, guy. You, you love the guy. Like, yeah, you, yeah. You, you think he deserves it. And, yeah, I do think he deserves mm. it. Yeah, I would want him. I, if I had to pick out of anybody, I want Bilal. Yeah. 100%. And especially, especially with the, with yeah. the Leon Edwards, the yeah. previous fight with the eye poke. And they, they've yeah. got, there's a story There's there. a story. There's unfinished business unfinished that's business. there that, that yeah. should be done. He should have got it. Um, let's talk about those two. Before we go on to Volk. Because that was another thing that happened uh, while we were away. And I remember messaging you on WhatsApp. I was like, ah! Um, how did you feel about the first uh, headshot from uh, Leon Edwards against Kamara Usman? Did you uh, expect something like that to happen? or were um, you kind of Well, like okay. I was watching the fight and I was thinking, wow, great, fantastic. I was thinking, uh, why is Kamara... Uh, still standing with the guy. Why did he just secure the win? Why yeah. is in his corner telling them to just lock Walk him around, in the cage, yeah. stay, stay in the cage, lock him up, grapple with him? Uh, and uh, Joe Rogan and DC were like talking. The lights were out, but you know someone forgot to tell Leon Edwards that the lights were out. Yeah, you know because he was still trying. Yeah. And I'm looking at this guy. I'm going, 
you know, while those guys, Joe Rogan and DC, are talking, I'm going, well, wait a minute. This kid's not fighting like he's done. Yeah, yeah. He's fighting like he still wants to win. And there comes that, you know, he tried that punch before where, where he threw the punch and yeah, the kick right behind it. it. Yeah. He tried it before. So mm -hmm. he wasn't like he just threw a Hail Mary. He yeah, was yeah. setting that sucker up. And it just so happened that, that it would hit money. So that was one of the greatest, for me, uh, single uh, comebacks I've ever seen in my whole entire mm -hmm. life in MMA. That was mm -hmm. an unbelievable just... I mean, there's a reason why it's called Rocky, right? He's got wow. the whole Rocky yeah. story. Yeah, right? what a, what a, and you know what? It's like uh, two great guys. You never know what's going to happen, which no. kind of brings me back full circle to Bilal. Now, people were saying the whole, uh, in that Leon Edward fights against him, Leon had won the first round anyway, and he was going to beat Bilal before the eye poke and all that stuff. And, and Bilal made a good point. He was like, well, look, he won his championship in the fifth round. So you can't really say that. You can't. Anything in the beginning of a fight, right? You can't, Anything you can't can happen because the, the fight's not the complete. Fight. Yeah. Okay. F I didn't see the fight, but but Izzy and, and Alex's rematch. You didn't from, see it? No, I didn't see it because it's like I don't get up that early. <laughs> and I'm not going to get up that early. <laughs> but I mean, you didn't watch it after? I didn't. Well, I just watched a little bit yeah, yeah. Uh, on, on Instagram. And this is my feeling on that. I heard, and I says, I heard, I don't know, I didn't watch yeah. it. I heard that Alex was dominating the whole first round and was dominating the second before he got caught. Yeah, there so, was a cough so so it's it's one of those deals again. You know, from what I saw on Instagram, I'm like going, I would be telling Alex, slow down, ease up, because Izzy wasn't hurt. Yeah. Izzy was still very he strong. And he was covering up well. And you could tell, you could tell when the guy's body shows you weakness, yeah. but his body was not showing me weakness. His body was showing, I'm here, I'm still in the fight. So I think that Pereira should have held back just a little bit, picked mm -hmm. the shots more. But, you know, Izzy caught him with a yeah. beautiful one too, you and know. And especially after the, the previous one, it, it was a similar situation against the cage. And he had that whole, that's how I won last time. I'm the champ. This guy's scared of knee. me. Yeah. And, and then I'm going to do the same thing again. Got overexcited. It got overexcited. And Izzy was just like doing the little peekaboo kind of through the yep. things, waiting, yep. playing possum. It, it, was, it, it was, was really nice to beautifully, see. Beautifully, beautifully executed by yeah. Izzy. Beautifully really executed. Nice and you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. I, I really, I really like him. I like uh, what he stands for. Stands for his guys. He, he's very, very loyal to his guys, mm -hmm. and I really like that. Even though it's against us at times, it doesn't matter. I still like the respect mm -hmm. factor and the the loyalty he has for his guys. Yeah, I, I respect that. Especially what he said after the fight, and this, you know, it, this shows this is a two champion as well. When he was saying, "Look, Pereira is still a champion." Once you're a champion, even if you lose your belt, you're still a champion. Do you know what I mean? You can't just take that away from someone. No. Just today. It, 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 was a, it was a it was a story right an ongoing yeah. story and today yeah. i won like this is yeah. the he won the only thing that that bothered me a little bit and and i understand his mentality the but jumping on the floor the yeah because you're talking about a what a four-year-old kid yeah. doing that and then but he even the, said he the, said i'm, pe the, I'm yeah. petty like yeah, that you're you know petty, <laughs> but still it's like it's a bad yeah. like now that kid's 12 years old yeah now that kid probably hates you for life yeah you know, and, and now he'll, he's, he'll get over you know, it. he's going <laughs> to, yeah, who knows what that little kid's going to end up yeah, doing, right? But you know, you know, he's 12 they, years old. But the thing is, you know, when they show like, um, they make these memes and it's like, this is his origin story when, from when he became a villain. So that, that Pajera's kid, it was like, this is what happened to turn him into the yeah, super villain. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. going to come back. Hopefully none of that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that does, look, yeah. look what it did for Izzy. He yeah. remembered that and it, bo exactly. it bothered and I think it, it bothered him. I think it wasn't just that. I think it was... Everything. All the fights. and Because when you think about it, it was... It was 2-2 in Izzy's head because Izzy should have won the first kickboxing match. Yes. The second one, they gave him a standing eight count when, before he was, you know, he was winning. You can't just, just randomly stop someone and go, let me just give him a standing eight count. That's very strange. And then Pajero won the, the other two, the last kickboxing one and the first one. So really, it's 2-2 now. But I don't think that it's, there's going to be a rematch going on. From what I uh, from what I see, I don't I don't. And then from uh, I I seen a little clip on uh, submission radio. Uh, his coach was talking about he, that uh, Alex is gonna have to really do something to get up there yeah. to get a rematch. And <laughs> all I can think about is <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but if the UFC wants to rematch, yeah, that's nothing. You you're not do, giving right? a chance. You got to do a rematch. Sorry, they are the boss. You know, yeah. you can say no, 
but that only extends your contract yeah. and it puts you in a dispute. They control it. Well, they're they might not going to take gonna, the gonna, title off you anyway. Yeah, like they're interim. not going to let you control it. Mm -hmm. They'll let somebody fight for the interim title. They look at what makes sense. They look at the, the eyeballs to the screen, the dollars to their bank account. And, yeah. and uh, you know, there's a reason why they bought the, the WWE, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they, hey, man, those guys know what they're doing. It's a sports entertainment. I'm sorry. It's not a true sport. Yeah, if yeah. anybody that thinks, uh, you know, UFC is a true, true mm -hmm. sport, Okay. Well, look, that what we're talking about with the whole Bilal thing going next thing. If it was, then that would be the case. Bilal right? would be the case. Yeah, Bilal yeah. would be in if it was a true sport. If it was a true sport. Yeah. It would be yeah. Bilal. I feel like <clears throat> we're, we're going back. Like, have you ever watched this bare knuckle fighting? The championships? Never. I never watched bare knuckle. You haven't I just, seen it? I just, you know what, it, you know what hits me is, is uh, I look at these guys and I see what bare knuckles can do to Their your face. face dude, and I'm just like, fight. I'm just telling myself, when I was fighting, there's no way I would ever consider fighting bare knuckle because I'm not getting my face split up for but it, whatever kind of But it's an organization money. now. It's a sport. Oh, it's, and, a, and it's a sport. And, and then you and, got the slap fighting coming on now. That's... I don't know. I have no comment on this. I, I, I just, I just feel like humans are that weird that if you let us, we'll go back to full-on shield and sword fighting soon. Like you know, the gladiator days, like yeah. to the death. I think that that you know the the old kumite style is, is the future. If 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 you, if no one stops it, because humans are very strange. They like to see this kind of weird animalistic two people against each other yeah, to the death they like that I, I think so i think so, you're right i think you're right me myself no but i think you're right as a general uh rule i think a lot of most people like that because they know. would do it now that because look bare bare knuckle uh, is is paying quite a bit of money and so if these guys like even uh, luke rockwell i've seen his interview where he's talking he's making a lot more money than he's ever made in the ufc mm. so obviously they're paying good money everybody uh mike perry is talking the same way so obviously they're paying good money so obviously they're getting good results because why are they paying this kind of money you know because yeah, how many fights can you really have when it's bare knuckle yeah because you know for, for somebody who's fighting once you get that opening or over the eyebrow Much and it heals to get cut again, yeah. once it hits you know a couple of more hits and, and it's just going to keep opening up yeah, every time even, easy. even if that hit wasn't a major hit but because the scar tissue is just weak it's just going to keep yeah. opening up so it's like how long is the longevity of a career in, in bare knuckle i don't know i i don't you don't know, do it kids I, I don't you know you ask me who is the champion in bare knuckle i couldn't give you one i don't even mm. know one name you ask me some names i know because they're all ufc yeah. names but when you think about it that's how masvidal started he started with kimbo slice in in the backyards yeah. doing bare knuckle yeah. and then went to the ufc yeah. but he he started bare knuckle when yeah and he was fighting guys double his size yeah. too you know he was pretty impressive a, a lot of people don't know that about yeah about I, I watched masvidal. him yeah. he was pretty impressive the days of kimbo slice they used to yeah. be on youtube videos yeah. and yeah. And they used to just be just straight up Kimbo street fights. Kimbo gave him his yeah. opportunity, yeah. No, I watched his fight. and uh, He fought a guy twice his size, yeah. and he beat him. Yeah. I mean, George, he's a bad man. It's a shame know? that he's he's done now. Well, you know, he's also 37, 38, you know, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's well, what has he got to be ashamed of if you think about it? He's done mm. everything. He's mm. beaten some of the greats. He's lost to some of the greats. He's been in great fights, you know, and uh, – He's going to be known as one of the greats. He's he's a huge popular guy now, so mm -hmm. he, he should be thankful for everything he's gotten, and I think he is. You know, uh, I'm more happy for him than anything. I don't mm -hmm. know him personally, but but uh, you know, hey man, nothing but respect for yeah. that guy. Yeah. So let's talk Volk Islam. How do, you, you obviously knew that was going to happen before they they called him out, right? Yes, I I, I knew I knew that right after that uh, they wanted to do the winner against Volk because Volk, they wanted to give him a shot mm. at uh, two times. So so I knew once that Islam won that Volk would be the next one, yes. And preparing to that, let's be honest, everything. Did you think it was going to work out differently? Did you think that uh, he was going to have a much easier time with, with Volk than Volk uh, well, gave him? Well, this is what I'll tell you. I, I, I was there three weeks. I was there in uh, Perth, Australia on the... 20th i believe i showed up and i was there for the last two weeks of training and islam looked great um habib would call me up and habib would say coach i'm really worried about this fight uh volkanovsky is really really tough uh i'm concerned for islam on this one a little bit and i'm like mm, i'm not 
we're going to win this fight. I don't know how easy, how hard, but we're going to win this fight. So I know you're worried, Habib, but I'm not worried. And, and he goes, I know, I know, coach, but 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 I think we, you know, we, you know, this is a tough fight. We need to prepare for a tough fight. I go, well, yeah, that's true, you know, but I still feel we're going to win, you know. Mm. And, uh, of course, fast forward to the fight, right? You know, it, it was uh, it was everything Habib said it was going to be. Super, super tough fight. And uh, for me, Alex won that fifth round, the last minute, minute and a half of, the, of that last fifth round. And to me, I only gave him that round. Just that but, one, right? But yeah. it was devastating. Mm. It was devastating. So in people's eyes, you know, that was, oh, you know, he, he did so fantastic. He won the fight. And then you look back, well, no, he won more fights because the other rounds, the other rounds were closer. Mm. But but Islam won. Uh, to me, Islam won four to one. And if you say three to two, okay, three to two. But when you're over there, every time Island did something, there would be no noise. Every mm. time, every time Volk did something, it'd be wow, the I whole mean, crowd went crazy. Could you expect yeah. anything less? Yeah, than that? exactly. So being that we won in Australia, that shows because they, they usually do when it's close. They usually give the hometown advantage. Hometown to, advantage. To the person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, Island won that fight. You know, but was it a tough fight? Hell yeah. Was it tougher yeah. than I thought? Hell yeah. You know, did he gain my full respects? Hell yeah, he got my respect. But mm. am I looking forward to the rematch if they have one? Hell yeah. yeah. I want that rematch. I want it. I know Islam wants it too. Yeah. You know, so we're not uh, we're not dodging nothing. If they if they UFC puts that match together, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen yeah. willingly on, on both parties. They're gonna want it. We're gonna want it. And I would hope they would make it a huge event because that fight delivered mm, it yeah, delivered yeah, yeah. it that was, was everything that was expected it delivered just like uh this last fight uh, delivered also with 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 uh you know Pereira and, and Izzy that delivered mm. even though I didn't watch the fight it delivered yeah but number but one number two yeah. number one versus number two that delivered but not only did it deliver it delivered for the whole fight like it wasn't like a, a two-rounder or a three-rounder then someone got knocked out it was like a a scrap till the till the bell it was a scrap and that's to, what to the just loved, it was a scrap I mean? yeah and and one of the things that that i know that they were shocked is they got outstruck mm. they got outstruck islam outstruck them not by a lot but he outstruck them you know and i don't think they were expecting that you know because mm. again the respect factor for for islam striking was not as high as it is now mm. now that's that's off the table now. No one's going to question how well-rounded he is. Mm. So everybody's going to know what he's all about. Now it's just a matter of who comes up with the better game plan, who gets the better shots in, et cetera, et cetera, and who comes in better condition. You know, uh, this last fight, it, it looked like Alex was the His guy that was in better was condition. Yeah, it was yeah. off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts. So let's see. Let's see what happens on, on if we have another one. And and you, I you said I'm, I'm pushing for it. <laughs> you said it, on like you had a date. Yeah, yeah, in your I'm, head. I'm, I'm I'm you know what nothing's official till the UFC announces yeah. it. But let's face it, uh, uh, Alex's fight's just been announced mm -hmm. against uh, Yair Rodriguez, right? So what do you so, think about that? You know, Yair is uh, Yair is very tricky. He, he's very he's, tricky. Uh, fluid, very fluid, very fluid. Can change any second. You know, let me tell you something. The, styles make fights mm -hmm. and, and Alex is not a wrestler so I don't see him trying to take Yair down mm -hmm. so being that Yair is going to have an orthodox style of striking effective striking I yeah. may add hey man don't 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 be shocked if an upset happens I, 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 I cannot I'm thinking, be yeah, yeah I cannot I, I cannot go like hey, it will never happen no it can't because Yair Cause, comes with angles yeah, dude that yeah, a lot of other yeah. fighters do not do come not. with those kind of angles they don't come you know these those kicks come from nowhere yes they come from nowhere and they come from a very confident yeah. fighter and in bunches not yes. just like it's not like one yeah. you'll get five kicks and three punches from nowhere yeah he was in the ultimate fighter with us and uh, with kane velasquez team so i had the privilege of of training him and uh i saw the raw talent and i saw his taekwondo mm. arsenal and how he was utilizing his taekwondo with his he had good jujitsu back then but mm -hmm. now he's just all the way yeah. around good everywhere how was it to have Kane back home? It was the we best really feeling. About that, yeah. It's the best feeling to have Kane back because he's such a great human being, such a great father, and to have him back home where he belongs with his family, it, it was a great, great feeling for me. And, you know, uh, so many people around the world, they just find out what he did and why he did it, and they're fans, mm -hmm. and they love him, and they should. 
You know, they should. Granted, what he did was not right. What he did was not right. But why he did it, mm. the love he has for his yeah. child and what he will do to protect his children. I mean, it, as any parent. We as parents mm. would like to think we do what he would do, but would we? I'm not saying we would. I don't I mean, know. I'm not going to put myself <laughs> in it. For any future stuff, I don't want to say something now that's going to get me in trouble. But I, Let, I Let's think, just say we love Cain yeah. because he stood for his family. And you know what? That was one of the only times where justice was actually served properly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Many of those situations would have favored the opposite person. Well, in this case here, you know, there was a case uh, many years ago where, where the, the molester got killed by the father shot while him. I was walking there, but they shot him, yeah. right, well, shot him, and he didn't get any time at all. Kane mm. is already, he's in house arrest. He's done time. And you know, the thing of it is, I think it's justified that Kane did time. It really mm. is. It's just trying to crucify him yeah that's yeah. not wrong punishing to make an him, example was of him, punishing yeah. him yeah there, there's some guilt on his side because innocent people were injured yes mm. but at the end of the day you know the motivation and what was going through his head etc cetera, et cetera. there's just a lot of elements we don't know anything about mm -hmm. that'll come out in, on, on, on trial that that i don't know anything about and i'm not at liberty to speak because i don't know anything mm -hmm. all i can do is hearsay right so for me the fact that he's back it tells me that that you know that things will work out in the end you know mm. because he's already done quite a bit of time yeah what's happening now with uh islam i don't know yet october uh, here uh, there's something here in october well right? you got to figure october 21st is here okay we don't have a date are we you, don't have are a date. you going to be here in october 21st if any of habib's fighters are here yes i will be here um but right now i can tell you this for sure, I know I will be September in in uh, in the states because I have uh, Usman gonna probably okay. fight, so I have to be with him. Yeah. So September, I have to be in the states. October twenty first is when it's in Abu Dhabi. My gut says I will be here. My yes. gut, but yeah. there's no, no there's no 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 opponent. Is no there nothing. a main event here? already been announced okay not that i know of but let's face it let's be honest okay this is a muslim country okay who are they going to support who's been who's been fighting yeah. here yeah if you don't have uh, islam here if you don't have at least hamzat here yeah. or or anybody this high high caliber uh muslim fighter yeah how successful is it going to be in this area i mean it's there's two ways because there's always you know, watching these kind of sports, it's a, uh, you love the sport, right? So yes. even though you would rather it be a Muslim fight or rather it be Islam or Hamza or whatever, I don't think you're not going to watch it because it's a... Oh, no, no, whatever. no, 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 no. People but are going to watch. What I'm thinking is who else is big enough to do it here that has the fan base here? I guess your point is right. Yeah, who else has the big enough? Yeah, Islamic fan base. Or, or yeah, it's it not. It's not going to work. Just makes them sense much, right? to me. It, has there been a main event here without, without it being a? There hasn't, right? No, that, Khabib, that, you Khabib, either, you have to have. A, there was a, Connor. A, yeah, you have to have a Islam here. You have to have a Hamzat here. You have to have Abu Bakr a here, a Umar here, a Bilal here. You have to have a strong presence in yeah. the Muslim fighter. If you're not, you're not doing the right. Yeah, you're, not, you're not promoting right you're not marketing no, and, marketing right and, and, and when it can accuse that of the ufc yeah, because yeah. they're a marketing yeah, machine yeah. they do a great job for a reason and their connection with here is is very tight so very tight they very don't want to they want to don't want to ruin anything yeah they're gonna ruin that. anything they're fantastic yeah who would you say out of your upcoming fighters is somebody that is to keep an eye out for other than the obvious ones usman and and, and, and two and, Okay. Two, uh, uh, you know, there's there's uh, one from um, my gym. Uh, his name is Mo Alarek. Mm -hmm. You know, he fights in the the UAE Warriors and with under you know a president's Fad Far uh, Darwish. Yeah, yeah and uh, Abdul Manam is the president, the owner of Palm Sports. Uh, they have they have a superstar in their hands. He's not developed like he needs to, but he's working on it. Uh, he's going to be the next one. And another one is uh, from Habib's team called Amaru. Okay. Amaru. What's um, special about him? That is Amaru is special because you've never seen a striker like this kid. He mm -hmm. is unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's young. He's tall. 
he is an unbelievable striker. Yeah. And uh, once he gets on the scene, those two guys are, are I believe, uh, in my heart, look out for. those that. Yeah, they have. They're only. I think. Uh, I think Mo is five and zero, and I think Amaru might be four or five and zero also. So those two are young. How old are they? Uh, I think Mo is twenty three now, and I think Amaru might be twenty two or twenty three. Mm. You know, so they're right around that same age. Um, both are going to be superstars. Both mm. of them. I feel like UAE Warriors is a great uh, stepping stone for to pass on to to the UFC. A hundred percent agree with you, but they also, if they change their platform on what they want, I think they could be like the UFC. Yeah. They have everything. They yeah. have the infrastructure. They have great marketing. They have great uh, promotion on, on the TV side. Yeah. You know, it's just what they want to do with it. Yeah. It's up to them. But but for me, for look. me, since yeah. I'm around it, I see what they do, yeah. how the, from their matching to, to everything, to the quality of fighters. They can do it, but do they want to? Uh, that's the that's only. That's the question. Yeah, that's because, the question. Because there's so many Arab countries, African countries, because they they're quite smart. Cause so they split it from Arab and then Africa, uh, and, and all these different places. And there's so many fans in these areas that they could. You're right. They could be the ones to take it. Let me tell you why. Where, where do Usman fight? Mm. UAE Warriors. Now he's Bellator champion. He, he's arguably, you know, of all champions right now, presently he's. Top three. Yeah. Top three or top two, you know, arguably, you yeah. know. So, yeah, he was with the UAE Warriors. Mm -hmm. There's other fighters that, that have been with them. So, they have a great uh, formula for what they're doing. Now, it's just a matter of how far they want to take it. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. I mean, it's daunting, right, when you want to take on the big boys kind of thing. It's like there has to be a lot of time and a lot of money put in there that you need to a, put in. A lot it's of time. Like, a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah. Do they want to do that? Do they have the resources to do that? Absolutely. But do they want to? I don't know. I, mm. I, I can't I can't answer that one. Only, only I'm gonna get Fouad on I'm gonna ask him the same question. Yeah, see what he wants because yeah. if Mr. Fouad wants to do it, he's my Habibi. So yeah, yeah. so uh, if he wants it, they can do it. Mm. But you know it's up to it's up to really the big boss Abdul Manam, brother Abdul Nan, he he decides what he wants mm. to do. If he wants to do it, he can do it. He has he has all the resources he needs yeah. to to give anybody a run for their money and be top. They can. Mm. Now, that's why I call him the best show in the Middle East because in my heart, from what I see, they are. Yeah, I mean, you, you got Tarek Salaman, you got a lot of people who went to PFL from there um, and different they're just kind of spreading to different promotions from from that one so yeah it's really interesting and they do it well i mean their, their events are they're not they're not cutting corners on their events and stuff like that so no there's no reason why no there is none other than what they want their preference yeah yeah their preference so here's a question i wanted to ask you so when it comes to coaching in your experience how do you funnel a fighter into a striker or a wrestler or a well, and I know you're trying to mix them all, but is there anything that you see at the younger ages where you go, he should be a striker, he doesn't know it yet, he's trying to focus on the wrestling, but he should be moving? Well, you hit it on the nail, that's what you do. You look at him and you see their skill set and you see where where he lacks or where he improves the most on, and, and that's what a coach does. That's what a real good coach does. He'll look at him and goes, you're primarily this type of fighter, but you need to round out everything. It's, what do you got here? Chess mm -hmm. set? Okay, well, it's the same thing as a chess set. Yeah. You look at a fighter, you go, okay, you got your pawns out there, you got the rook, you got the bishop, you got the knight, you know, you got your queen and you, you got the king. You know, learn how to use all your pieces. And you go, ah, you don't know how to use your knight properly, mm. you know, so. That's why you're always getting checked yeah, in that corner. It, it, <laughs> yeah, and then, oh, you seem to like using your queen much, so that mm. means maybe you're boxing, that may be your wrestling. Yeah. So, make sure your queen stays sharper than all because yeah. that's what you're the best at and sometimes people just try to use their queen when there's no need to use the queen whatsoever and you're just like hey stop getting excited just because you can do that perfect example of someone that i think and i didn't see the fight and you can tell me because i know you watched it is uh kamar uzman with leon edwards did he use his queen in this last fight did he try to wrestle with him much nah. okay so where was the mistake do you know what it, it, it I, Leon came out different. There was a, I guess, yes, hometown advantage, I guess. But he seemed like he was very cool. He was, a, yeah. he had a different aura about him. It's like, you know, he was waiting to get there for so long. And then once he got there, he was like, let me just cruise. Yeah. Well, you know, 
I have a different approach on those type of things because I'll give you an example. One of my guys, that Enrique Barzola, you know, when I was over, uh, I was in uh, Perth, Australia, and my son, Jeremy, he called me and said, uh, Dad, Enrique is looking really bad. He's not doing what he needs to do. And But I know when you get here, you're going to straighten him out, you know, but he's fighting horrible. He's getting hit too much, this and that, this and that. So I come in and I look at Enrique sparring. It was horrible, just like my son said. I said, what the F are you doing? is this how you're going to fight your fight? You're going to go out there and give this guy an opportunity to beat you? Mm. Yeah, you may, you can maybe get this guy and strike him, but where can you 100% beat this guy? On wrestling coach, I go, then what the hell are you doing? Mm. You better practice that now. So I got Enrique wrestling, 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 wrestling in the sparring. You know, yeah, punch hard, kick hard, do the right things, but don't forget the wrestling. If you enforce that, they go into the fight and it's automatic. But mm. if you don't enforce that, and then you tell them, panic. That, yeah, yeah, then they go into the fight, then they have to do something they really didn't even practice. Yeah. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Hey, go wrestle. Well, did you wrestle and practice much? Did yeah. you use it and practice much? If you didn't, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. And you get tired quicker too. So you gotta use those muscles, you know? So that's what I'm saying. So mm. did Usman work a lot of wrestling or did he try to just block the kicks? And then just get on with it. Yeah. yeah, just go on with it. Was that a mistake? Was that a mental mistake? I don't yeah. know. I didn't watch the fight. So don't take me as what I'm saying is correct because I don't it's, know. It's, it's different. Like, I don't think people realize how much of an effect psychologically it does when you get knocked out. It, it's huge. Like, as a fighter, can you talk a little bit on that whole, when you have your first loss or when you have that, or, or when you get knocked out, that it gives you that two-second kind of pause well, you know, when, if you, let's just use me as a reference. You know, when I uh, when I started training, everybody I trained with was talking about I could be the best, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're so much talent, blah, blah, blah. I didn't believe nothing. I didn't believe anybody. And uh, so I go out there and, and normally I would do most of my training in the boxing gyms and do mm. most of my sparring with boxers, pro boxers. So <clears throat> for me, I didn't respect kickboxers. I was like, nah, I'll just get ready and kickbox with the boxing, boxing training, no big deal. I, I, I kick my whole life, I can kick anytime. That's what I put in my head. Uh, I go into that, my first loss and wow, <laughs> I got a kickboxing lesson. Yeah. <laughs> On top of that, I couldn't kick, I was so tired kicking and yeah. I was in great boxing shape, but I wasn't in good kicking shape. Even though I had kicked many yeah, years yeah. before that, I wasn't ready for it. So that's how I learned from my mistakes and that's why I'm so big on my guys. That's why I jump on them. That's why I jumped on Enrique. Because even though you can wrestle, you're not doing it. Mm. You got to practice it because you're going to have to use it in that fight. You know, and what I forgot to finish with is Enrique did do that in the fight. And it happened exactly like I told him it would. He dominated the guy because of his wrestling. Mm. Had he not done that, he might not have won that fight. Yeah, you have, to, you have to keep doing it. I mean, even something like skydiving. You can have 150 jumps jumping out of a plane but if you haven't jumped for two years and then that first jump is not going to feel the same as no. as the last 10 that you did two weeks apart every single time right no, it's like no, it's not. you have to just kind of make sure that you brush up on the, on that stuff yep did you not want any of your kids to become fighters uh no i didn't want them to be fighters but if they were i would support it my son jeremy uh he didn't want to be a fighter and uh but he wants a coach so he's mm. coaching now he's got some up-and-coming uh fighters uh that he's coaching for me while I'm gone. So he's taking care of what I used to do with the, my home guys. Mm. Not all of them, but but uh, like Mo Alaric, he takes care of Mo and a, a few other guys. And he's got some of his own. And uh, as a coach, I'm gonna do everything I can to prep him, to give him all the insights without actually having to fight. Cause mm. you don't have to fight to be a great coach or a good coach. You just have to have the desire and you have to learn, you know, and, and, and be open-minded. And my son is all of those. And so, how, how do you do that? How do you how do you do that indirectly without just being on his case all the time? Is there is there something that is there a, a specific way that you do it? Because I'm sure, you know, w with with any sport, with anything, being such a good coach, people want to come to you also to be coaches, not just to be fighters, right? Do you get yes. other people who come yes. to you and say, "Teach me how to coach"? Yes, so, and I and I don't. I yeah. I, I I do teach some. But but it's I have to see the desire, and I let my son come to me. I don't go to him. Mm -hmm. I don't say, "What are you doing this? You should be doing that." No, he comes to me. He tells me, "Dad, what do you think about this? Dad, what do you think about that?" Then I give him my opinion. If he doesn't ask me, 
unless it's super, super wrong, I'm not going to say nothing to him. Because mm. if it's not in his heart and it's not in his mind to want to make it better, it's not going to happen. Mm. So I, I leave it alone. But I encourage it. In other words, great job, son. I love you. That's the right way to do it. That's what coaching is about. Mm. That's all the things you need to do. But if he doesn't talk to me, I'm not going to say, son, this is what you need to do. You need to do this and do that. I can't do that. Yeah. He has to want to do it. He has to come to me. If he can come to me, I'm there. If he doesn't. Especially because you're his father. I think that is a, it's like the old, you know, when you were young and you were at your house, you never used to do the dishes. But when you went to a friend's house, you'd be like, oh, let me take care of that after yeah, you yeah, ate, yeah, right? Yeah, and just yeah, pretend yeah, like yeah, yeah. when somebody's your dad and they're telling you what to do, it's just yeah. like, it's not the same as an outside person. So you already have that kind of, uh, yeah. that, that block. Yeah, you do. But, and yeah. also too, it's like Habib would say uh, with the guys, well, coach doesn't, doesn't ask to train us and this and that. And Habib would say, did you go to him? Yeah. No, I go, well, then you knew, you want knowledge. You go to knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Knowledge is not coming to you. You go to him. Yeah. And that's the way I work. You yeah. come to me and I do it with my own son. I don't go to him. He wants the knowledge. He comes to me. And what he does, and specifically, he'll say something, dad, you know, I love being around Cain Velasquez. I go, why, son? He goes, because everything he says makes sense. Everything he says, so I love being around him. I learned so much from him. And I said, good, continue that because yeah. he has a lot to offer, you know. And th th that's how you, those are the things yeah. that you you hit on, you know, right in. That's it. That's the right thing. Yeah. What would you say are the, the best and worst attributes of a coach? The best attributes is the love you have for your fighters. The worst attributes is if you treat them like a dog. You know, make them do things they don't want to do. Don't listen to them. Mm. That's the worst. Like that old Chinese Russian gymnastics kind of uh, coaching. Like, you know, when you see them with the kids and, and they're just like in a handstand and they're just like hitting them with sticks. And yeah, it's like it's, that kid's going to hate gymnastics by the time they're 10. And they're going to hate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to hate you. You know, look, if you're going to be, in my opinion, this is my opinion. This is how I coach. Love. Mm. You know, work with love because you want to be there. Don't do not do fear. Mm. You can't get nothing from fear except fear itself, you know? And what accomplishment did you just do? If if I make you do things out of fear, do you think there's not gonna be a slight, slight, slight mm -hmm. hesitation? Yeah, versus sure. if you do something out of love because you want it and you wanna, you wanna please your family, you wanna please your coach, but more importantly, you want it mm -hmm. because you love it. And you're gonna do it. Yeah, and also it's, it's legacy as well because whether you like it or not, if they're not a very strong-minded individual, they will then pass that on to yeah. the next people and the exactly. next people and the next exactly. people, and then you won't be able to break that cycle. Exactly. And then, and then the, the last one I could just say is, uh, you know, no, no fighter is the same. No mm -hmm. style is the same. Don't, don't try to make everybody fight the same style. And expect one person to be able to do something because somebody else. Everybody's did. got different skill sets. Someone's yeah. short. Someone's tall. Someone's got short arms. Someone's got long arms. Someone's fast. Someone's slow. Someone hits hard. Someone don't hit so hard. Mm. You can't make them all fight the same. Yeah, yeah. They're all different. Crazy. You're here for another week, right? I'm here for uh, May first. May first, and then we'll do our next episode on the twenty what of October. <laughs> 20 something like, part three. <laughs> if, if I'm here, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, let's just put it this way. I would say there's a good chance I will be here because there's a good chance I will have one of my fighters on. Same. It might be Umar. It might be Islam. It might be Abu Bakr. It's hard to say. I mean, uh, I may be here or it might be Tahir. That's it. I've booked you your know? episode for now. From book, now book till now, then, I've booked you and it, the it fire. Could, it, could, it could be one of those guys. <laughs> you and the fire. Yeah. The UFC announces, yeah. uh, you know, I can tell you, oh, yeah, we're coming here. But until it's official on their site, it yeah, means yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've done that before. Yeah, where, you said where, it and then nothing. Yeah, I got set up by reporters at yeah. the uh, one event, uh, the UFC press conference. They go, oh, so so-and-so's fighting this. What do you think about that? And I'm like, well, yeah, you know. The, the, and all of a sudden I hear that they, they, they weren't too happy with me because the fight hadn't been announced. Oh, and I go, okay. well, what Why the hell you, am yeah, I yeah, being yeah. asked in this damn interview about <laughs> yeah, yeah. this fight if it wasn't announced? Yeah. And then that's when I realized that, ah, it's just a reporter trying yeah, to yeah. get something juicy that hasn't happened yet yeah 
So I'm like, yeah, that's why I, I always say until the UFC announces it, don't listen to me. I've noticed that. And that's why you're always announcing it. In, in my opinion, in my opinion. Yeah, don't get me <laughs> in trouble. Yeah, yeah, don't get me in trouble. Yeah. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure. Time flies when, when we're here. I know you've got somewhere to go. I don't want to get don't arrested get me in, trouble. In, my own, in my own country because I know who's coming to get you. I'm not going to say anything. But, <laughs> but um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you so much for taking out the time and coming down as you always do. And um, but where's my jibber jabber? I'm gonna bring it to you. Why he you here? Also, you also owe me the other t-shirt. I want that uh, AKA t-shirt that oh, you bought the last evil time. One. Do you know what? I want to do some giveaways because okay. I'm not even joking. I had about 300 comments of people saying I want one of those shirts. Wow. So I don't want you to give me 300, but at least two or three will be fine. Um, and yeah, we'll get it done. Thank you okay. so much. We'll um, next time we'll be then, and I'll see you uh, tomorrow or the day after. We'll get, we'll yeah, get we'll see you tomorrow. With the, Is there the, anything the, that, that you place? feel we missed? Uh, no, I think you covered everything, you know, um, uh, thank you for not making fun of me being fat. Uh, other we'll than that, the, I've know, got a video. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm you not got gonna the video. The video, dude. Been complaining <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a black here. shirt to <laughs> yeah, hide right. it. You know, but when you're fat, you're fat. We can say. I, I told I you. I gotta embrace thick. the fat. There's a difference between th thick, thick. and strong. <laughs> it's strong. It's strong. If you would have seen me, uh, if you would have seen me in the Maldives, in the Maldives just I didn't take my shirt oh, off. No, so that tells you. That tells you. I did not take my shirt off. I don't know if it's worse if you don't take your shirt off or get out of the water with, a wet, even, with a wet shirt. You can even see I'm, I'm saying, well, you can see I'm all wet and I'm saying, I'm doing a thing on my Instagram. I, I said, Habib, I'm in the Maldives. I'll send you location type I saw thing. The video. Did you see with my shirt off or shirt on? <laughs> I saw it on. <laughs> okay, it on. there you go. On. Did he come or he didn't come? No, he, 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 he said uh, that uh, he loved the... Uh, what I showed him and he said that's his kind of place private because it's a private place. Yeah, yeah. If you're a celebrity and you want to just enjoy time with your family, the Maldives is, is one of those destinations where it's just a little island and it's mm. just you and three, four hundred people and they leave you alone. Yeah, next, yeah. next time I'll come, don't worry. Yeah, that's the um, best place to go. Have you uh, told Khabib already that he's coming on next week or you haven't told him yet? He's uh, No, I haven't told him yet. Okay, let's, let's make sure we get that Special done. surprise. <laughs> We're gonna make sure we get that done. Dude, thank you so much right. as always. Bro, it's Thank been you. emotional. It's been a pleasure. And I'll emotional. see you next time. Yeah, of course. Emotional. It always is, man. It <laughs> always is, man. <laughs> okay. Guys, I've been AJ. He's been Coach Have. Boom. Oh.